Neat Nation, welcome back to the Drew Pete Whiskey Show. Many of you maybe thought I was never coming back. Uh, and you know what? <clears throat> As has been my pattern, this may be the only video that we do for a matter of months. But it was one I was, I was excited to do. It was Bardstown Origin Series. This is that bottled and bond six year weeded, which is exciting. I mean, I've been a big fan of the Bardstown collaboration series, Discovery, and then Fusion was meh, right? Like they've been releasing their own juice a little bit through those Fusion products. Um, and it was kind of grainy, right? Sure, they paired it with some well-aged stuff, mostly like rye-based mash bills, and it was fine. Like it was fine, but overpriced. What was it? like? 50 bucks 60 ish you know that just seems a little bit a little bit much but when i was at the store woodman's shout out woodman here locally uh in oak creek and i found the first release of origin series they had the six-year bottled and bond we did i was like you know what yeah at 45 dollars which is a little below msrp but uh given that i bought a lot of whiskey recently the last two bottles i bought were well king ranch russell's store pick you know good stuff um and i've been drinking through you know a lot of the lower tier end of my collection i i anyway not a lot has allured to your boy but this one i was eager to get into especially when my boy brian bikey at abandoned bourbon said he liked it and he asked a question is it a weller substitute which is, you know, clickbaity, but a fair question, right? Because <laughs> we all want Weller. Not a lot of us can get Weller. I happen to have some Weller from my most recent Texas trip. So you know what I thought we would do? That's right. A little side by side. I'll hit you with some tasting notes from Origin Series, Six Year Weeded, and then compare those to Weller Special Reserve, which I'll then probably give a lucky coworker who can't get it. Don't know which one yet. I already bottle popped this. I have prepared some tasting notes. Uh, you know, I, I did some thinking with it earlier. So opened it last night, really, uh, right after I got it, which again was a bit of a first. Kind of felt good. Felt like old times. A little bit. Get a new bottle. Pop it right away. And uh, yeah. So uh, nose wise, super sweet. Kind of bread pudding me. Uh, not too dissimilar from cinnamon roll. Maybe not that depth of sweetness. There's some bright elements to it too. There's kind of an herb herbaceousness. Not really rye, but kind of fresh, fresh grassy. But uh, the sweetness is predominant. There's kind of like a white pepper. You know, the, the it doesn't scream youthfulness, but it's clear that it's not hella aged. Okay. Palette. Really nectary. Light honey on the tip of tip of the tongue. Big smoothness vibes. Your smooth guy. Uh, flavor wise. Kind of reminiscent of a cognac. A little white grapey. A little cognac-y up front. And then you get more classic bourbon notes. Uh, brown sugar i think that that bread pudding that i called out uh, fits i think it works here and then fruit wise it, it's very apple-y uh, like a sweet apple honey crisp big fan of the honey crisp apple i had to pick one apple for the rest of my life uh team honey crisp uh i mean yeah the tart apples i'm not, I'm not really you know, galas I, i'm okay with the gala chewy um it highly crushable at 100 proof not hot not hot at all the only thing if i'm being picky that is kind of meh for me is the finish finish it does kind of leave your tongue a little aspirin-y like that white pepper that's where if i'm getting any big suggestions of youth which they're not big so any suggestions of youth uh it's coming at the end so up front nose wise and then palette wise it's all great till the finish and then i get this kind of bitter pepper uh but that's me being picky so value wise at 45 dollars given 
the way that things have gone, <laughs> which largely uh, left me with a bad taste in my mouth, no pun intended, uh, related to bourbon is that, you know, $45 for a six year product, feeling like a value is a little bit crazy. That said, it's, it's a good value for what you pay. I mean, the bottle itself, like these heavy duty, really slick Bardstown Bourbon Company bottles, they probably cost $5 just for the bottle. Uh, and then the juice inside is, is quite good. So I'm I'm okay with this. I'm a fan of this. I'm a buy. If you like bourbon and you need bourbon, uh, I'm a buy as I did buy on this bottle at $45. Now let's get to the the quash of the day though uh, with this Weller. I got a touch of the bard sound left. Pop another reasonably clean blend cairn. Bottle pop on the Weller. Bottle crack, I guess. And let's do a little side by side. Ooh, sloppy. Okay, so we'll go Weller right. Barge Town on the left. Um, Brian mentioned in his video, which if you haven't watched it, you should probably do that that he felt like Weller, particularly the Special Reserve, had grainy notes. I've never felt that way. Like, I've never felt like this communicated use. Not always the best, overhyped for dang sure, but at a $25 or $30 liter, pretty good whiskey. And uh, I mentioned white grape on the nose on this one. I, you tend to get more red grape stuff out of Buffalo Trace profile, particularly their rye based stuff. But I, I still get it, and I get, you know, kind of like cherry candy on the Weller Special Reserve. I get tons of sweetness in this, like that cherry candy uh, fruitiness on the Weller Special Reserve without that kind of grassy bitter note on the Bardstown. Yeah, yeah, there's something more medicinal on the Bardstown that I'm not feeling as much. Where's the Weller? It, yeah, it smells great. No complaints here on the nose. Not a big presence of oak there, but enough to, to lure me in. So palette on the Weller. This lacks complexity of flavor. Finish is better. It's not sharp. It's not really bitter. It's uh, kind of boring. Whereas this was not boring. Finish better, palette worse. This had better viscosity up front, which was kind of surprising given the finish. Uh, and also more depth of sweetness on the palette. Granted, it's 10 proof points higher, but. A little more of that. It's like you took a pill with dessert. It's like you're trying to get your dog to take its pill so you grind it up and food or your kids for that matter. That's kind of what it reminds me of. Chocolate pudding uh, with, uh, I don't know, tamoxicillin or something, whatever you would give a kid that they don't want to take because it tastes bad. Um, kind of just on the end. So up front it's all this desserty pudding without a ton of oak, but some. And then this one is just like very light sweetness, white grapey, one note, super simple, but good. Uh, if you're asking me to pick a winner, the boy has to pick a winner. I think I would, I think I would prefer the Bardstown. That the finish, maybe it'll calm down after a little more air gets in. Who's to say? Uh, I'll come back to it over time. I'm, I don't think I'm gonna shy away from this bottle. I think it's this is a good party bottle to take when I'm like, oh, I need something that tastes good, but I don't really feel bad having people who don't know anything about bourbon drink it. I think that, that is a good option for that. Uh, so is it a Weller replacement? Yeah, for sure. Uh, the profile's not that similar, but the specs kind of are. Uh, the value, given that I can buy this at the store for 45, Secondary value, which <laughs> is just dumb to say, but secondary value on this is probably north of that. Uh, yeah, get this one. 
for the nation faithful you've been waiting for videos over these these months uh, thank you and welcome back um, I really should do another video on the secondary market because it's been fun to watch uh, law enforcement kind of pop off a little bit uh, it's getting interesting out there so I called it uh, and it, I'm eager to keep watching uh, things in the months and weeks to come not sure what's next. This is fun though. So until I see you again, y'all, you know the drill. Just keep it neat.